In the next few sessions, I'm going to discuss with you the grade 12 probability from the new CAP syllabus. Now, the probability in grade 12 is really about the fundamental counting principle. Now, you may ask the question, why do we need something with this big name, the counting principle? If I can take you back to grade 10. In grade 10, we discuss the definition of probability. Now, probability, if I can remind you, is the favorable outcomes divided by all the possible outcomes. That is what we did in grade 10. Now, you will remember that in easy questions, we, we just use that basic definition of all the possible, uh, all the um, favorable outcomes divided by all the possible outcomes. Now, we then start, started with problems in grade 10 where we needed to solve probability questions and this definition was not that easy to use anymore. And then we introduce Venn diagrams to assist us in our probability questions. In grade 11, we expand those Venn diagrams to three event Venn diagrams. And we also introduce three diagrams to help us to solve probability questions. Also in grade 11, we used contingency tables to help us to solve probability questions. So as you can see, as you can hear that over grade 10 and 11, we always made use of certain things, if I can call it things, or, uh, or tools to help us to solve probability questions, like Venn diagrams, like tree diagrams, like um, contingency tables. And now in grade 12, we're going to introduce the fundamental counting principle. Now, why do we need this counting principle? Many people say, but because we, we know how to count. This is not just simple counting one, two, three. This is in particular where we need to count how many different arrangements. Now, why do we need it? Again, if you listen to the definition of probability, which says how many favorable outcomes and you can hear the word how many we need to know how many we need to count divided by the total number of outcomes. So to be able to answer probability questions where the counting process is difficult and not so easy just to use normal counting methods, we are going to need this fundamental counting principle. And that is what we're going to discuss within the next few sessions to explain to you what this fundamental counting principle is and, and uh, what it is all about and how it is going to help us to solve probability questions. I am now going to discuss with you the rule or we can call it the definition of the fundamental counting principle.